Hey everybody, this is Doug with another short video for my fellow device implant friends. Uh, today I just thought I'd uh, do a little video of uh, the different types of products, the different types of devices that are in our bodies. Uh, I've got some demos here that I borrowed from a contact at Medtronic, uh, so I can show you some, some of the things of what they look like. Uh, today I was going to talk about insertable loop recorders, pacemakers, defibrillators, and cardiac resynchronization devices. And really it's just an overview of what they are, what they're used for, how many leads each of them uh, has, um, just kind of some overview information, so just interesting information. Uh, you know, I'll start off with the, the insertable loop recorder here. Um, this is a Medtronic Link device. I'm going to take a good close look at that. It's a very small item. Uh, this is this uh, delivers no therapy at all. This is just inserted into the body. It's not even uh, considered an implant. It's considered an injection uh, because it's kind of injected into your body. And I'll have to stand to show you where it goes. But it uh, goes right in the meaty part of your pectoral region here, and they, they inject it into your skin, and it sits there. And all it does is record your heart rate. And it does that in about a eight minute loop, and it keeps recording over and over itself uh, just for as long as you have it in. It can stay in for about three years. And all it does is record your heart rate. So if something drastic happens, uh, and the device picks up on it on its own, or the patient has a patient activator, they can hit a little, click a little button like a garage door opener, and it'll beep, and uh, it'll record the last six minutes of an EKG and the next two minutes. So you can see what was going on with your heart before and after this event that you recorded. Uh, kind of a neat little thing, it's just a diagnostic tool, but it can lead to the implant of other devices, which we'll talk about now. Uh, the first is a pacemaker. Now, this is a, called an implanted, a pl implantable pulse generator, IPG. But we refer to it here on the, uh, the Facebook forums as a pacemaker or a PM, so that's kind of how I'll refer to it as well. Uh, so the pacemakers are meant for slow heart rates. Any heart rate that drops below a certain point that makes you feel dizzy or lightheaded or maybe even makes you pass out. Uh, they can be a one or a two lead system. Um, now, I know some of you are saying, hang on, I've got a pacemaker, it's a three lead system. That's actually a different class of products and we'll talk about that in a second. But the pacemaker has two leads. You can see it's got a header block here. I'll try to hold that up nice and close. It's got a little header block where you can put one or two leads. This is a dual, uh, dual lead system right here, a dual lead device. Um, and if you had one lead, it could go in the atrium, the right atrium, or the right ventricle, although um, it's really uncommon to have just one lead in the right atrium. It's just not very common. It's possible, but not common. So uh, typically you'd have that in the right ventricle if you have a one lead system, or if you have a two lead system, it'd be in the right atrium and the right ventricle, so you're on the right side of the heart. Um, and that's pacemaker. Again, it's for slow heart rates. Uh, beyond that, above that, we have ICDs, or defibrillators. Uh, and it's called an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, ICD. And this is for heartbeats that are too fast. So you have either ventricular tachycardia, which is a really, really, really fast heart rate, and that can make you feel lightheaded or dizzy or maybe even make you pass out. Or you have ventricular fibrillation, which is really bad because that's known as a cardiac arrest. Uh, and that's what this is for. And this will shock you out of a fast rhythm. D uh, defib units also have a built-in pacemaker. So just in case you do need to be paced as well, uh, that's available with these devices. So it's a pacemaker defibrillator. These can also be one or two lead systems. Uh, if it's a one lead system though, they're not gonna put a, a defibrillator lead into your right atrium. Uh, they just aren't, that's a very rare thing to do. So they usually won't do that. If it's a single lead system like mine is, it'll be in the right ventricle. That's the bottom chamber of the heart on the right side. And if it's a two lead system, you'll have one lead in the atrium and one lead in the ventricle. Uh, so those are defibrillators. Now there is a subset of defibrillators called um, subcutaneous implantable cardioverter defibrillator, SICD. Those are only made right now by Boston Scientific. I don't have a demo of that because um, I don't have a contact where I can get that from somebody at Boston Scientific, but they're about, they're about this big, I'd say, maybe about like that. So they're a little bit bigger. They're actually implanted on the, uh, on the left side over here. They're implanted under the arm like that. And the lead wire is then tunneled across to the breastbone, and then the lead is inserted up on top of the breastbone, but under the, under the skin, up to a point probably about right here in your chest, and that way the uh, electricity will travel through your heart when uh, it's needed. Now, the, the, the only um, the upside of that is that there's no lead in the heart, so that's, you know, that's important for some people. Uh, the downside is that SICDs can't pace you, so if you need to be paced, you'll, you won't get an SICD, you'll have to get a traditional ICD. Uh, so there's pacemakers and defibrillators. Now there's another class of device 
called a cardiac resynchronization therapy device, CRT. And the goal of the CRT device is to synchronize the bottom chambers of the heart to get them to beat in synchrony. Because if they're not beating in synchrony, that leads to heart failure. So uh, that's a bad thing. If you have a CRT system, this is what they look like. Here's a pacemaker version right here, and this is the defibrillator version right here. Uh, if you have a CRT system, you have a three lead system. So you'll have one lead in the right atrium, and one lead in the right ventricle, and then the third lead needs to go to the left ventricle, but there's no way to get a lead inside the left ventricle, not unless you open the heart up, which they just won't do. Um, so what they do is they insert this, the, the third lead, they insert it into the right atrium, and in the right atrium there is a blood vessel that breaks out of the heart called the coronary sinus. And this is a blood vessel that goes on the outside of the heart, and then there's branches. And that's how the heart gets um, oxygen. The heart can't absorb oxygen from inside the heart. So the blood that's inside the heart doesn't feed the heart muscle. It has to go to the outside. So it goes out of the coronary sinus, and it goes down these branches. So they feed that lead down into the right atrium, and then into the coronary sinus, which puts it on the outside of the heart, and they feed it down one of the branches, getting it down to the left ventricle. And that way you have a lead in the right atrium, a lead inside the right ventricle, and then a lead on the outside of the left ventricle. And then those bottom chambers can uh, beat in synchrony. So anyway, I uh, just thought I'd give a little example, show you what the, the different things look like, um, kind of tell you where, you know, what, the, what these things are used for and how they're, how they're uh, implanted. Most of these will go, uh, these devices will go in the upper pectoral region here, usually on the left side, mine's on the right because of an anatomical difference, but most people get them put up here below the collarbone, but uh, in the kind of the meaty part of the pectoral region. And uh, simple as that. Uh, I'm gonna do another video on leads, so you can learn about how leads are implanted and what they look like. I have some demos from those as well, so I'll show you what leads look like and, and how they are implanted in the heart. And uh, really, most importantly, why it's important we uh, kind of take it easy after initial implant so that we don't dislodge our leads. But hey, hope that was helpful, hope it was educational, and uh, hope you have a great day. Thanks.